Well, hi there. This, well, not this, but this is a green mamba. Specifically, it's an eastern green mamba. And it is probably the best pet mamba that you can get. We're gonna have a whole video about them soon. But I have a bit of a spoiler. Turns out you can be the best pet mamba and still be an absolutely terrible pet. I know, it's shocking. But what if I told you that there is another beautiful, green, nearly two meter long arboreal venomous snake that makes a great pet? Would you believe me? Well, here it is. And it's amazing. This is the Baron's Racer. And I think I might need one myself. I mean, for starters, look at how beautiful this snake is. The most common colors for these snakes are green and blue, though they also come in brown and a host of other colors. Kind of similar to the Insularis Pit Vipers that we will be covering very soon, but without the likelihood of losing any fingers. Because while venomous, the venom is not nearly as potent as that of even the least dangerous vipers that I know, which we will also be covering soon. Man, if you don't already subscribe to this channel, now would be a really good time. You should click that little bell as well. But there is more to love about the look of this snake than just the color. Look at the nose. This nasal protuberance is most pronounced in males, and it's flexible. It's very similar to what you would see on the nose of an Asian vine snake. But if feeding lizards to a snake is a deal breaker for you, well, Baron's Racer is still on the table. Though you could totally feed them lizards. They will basically eat any vertebrate. And look at this tail. It starts right here. All of this is tail. That is such a long tail for a snake. It's huge. Most snakes have actually very short tails. And while most people would probably be surprised that the tail of this snake is less than a third of its total length, I, I think most people think that snakes are pretty much tail from the neck back, 30% of the length of this snake is just tail. It is such a long snake tail. Snakes generally have very long bodies, but like I said before, short tails. Anyway, I love these snakes. And I think I need one for Clint's reptile room. But today, we are gonna find out if the Baron's Racer is as good of a pet as it seems. I mean, it is still venomous. So is the Baron's Racer actually a good pet? And is it the best pet snake, well, for me, and, and maybe you as well? To figure this out, we will have to give the Baron's Racer a score based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we have some important questions to answer. Now, you've probably noticed that I'm up here just holding this snake, so it's probably reasonable to conclude that it's better to handle than the black mamba that we covered last week. Of course, I was just casually handling a king cobra like this in our video on king cobras, so I think that we have two really important questions to answer. First, how bad is that venom? And second, how likely am I to get some of that venom? The venom itself is not insignificant. A western hognose snake can give you some, what I would call, venom. And if you let it chew on you for a while, your hand will swell considerably, at least for some people. But I would consider their venom to be nearly insignificant. This venom causes potentially localized swelling hemorrhaging, and necrosis, which is tissue death. It's probably a lot more like the venom of a false water cobra than it is like the hognose snake. If it kills you, you're probably the first. Though if you're allergic to other venoms and stings, uh, I would be extra careful with these snakes. But it shouldn't cost you your life or even any digits. And it would be extremely odd if it did. And uh, that's definitely a good thing. But it's still not a good thing if you're extremely likely to be bitten. This is called a Baron's Racer, and racers are the bitiest snakes I have ever encountered. Plus, it looks like an Asian rat snake, and the biggest problem with many Asian rat snakes is that they tend to be pretty bitey. But this isn't an Asian rat snake. Do you want to know something kind of crazy that I discovered? Of all of the Asian rat snakes, the one that looks the most like the Baron's Racer, to me at least, is the rhino rat snake. It's really a pretty shocking resemblance, if you ask me. Well, there is something called an antipode. An antipode is the farthest distance on Earth from another point on Earth. 
If you dug a hole straight down from where you're standing through the center of the Earth and popped up on the exact opposite side of the planet, you would arrive at the antipode of your current location. This is relevant because if you were holding a rhino rat snake in its native range in Asia, you would be standing at the antipode of the range of the Barrens Racer. You could not possibly be farther away from the native range of the Barrens Racer without leaving the planet. They are South American snakes from Argentina, Bolivia, and Paraguay. And whereas its Asian doppelganger comes from the rainforest, Barron's racers come from semi-arid habitats. And despite being called a racer, they're very, very uninclined to bite. Though I do know somebody who's been bitten today, and so we can ask him about that in a minute. <laughs> They might musk you, but generally speaking, they don't tend to bite. So despite having a venom similar to that of a false water cobra, which gets a three for handleability, and despite looking like an Asian rat snake and being called a racer, the Baron's racer gets a four out of five for handleability. Though the fact that they are venomous may make it considerably more difficult to get one, but we'll get to that later. Honestly, if you're gonna be bitten by a Baron's racer, it's most likely to happen as a feeding response and not a defensive response. So be careful when getting them out of their enclosure, but once they know that it isn't feeding time, you should be good to go. Unless you're trying to stuff one in a bag. This is a large colubrid snake, though this one here is not quite fully grown just yet. And it's a very, very good climber. And that's nice, because it means that it'll hold on to you pretty well. Uh, and that makes drops less likely, though it may dive for the ground at times. It's a light-bodied snake, which makes falls... Uh, you know, not nearly as severe as they would be if this were a more heavy-bodied snake, but it also means that children and things could harm it by squeezing it or just being otherwise rough with it. You know, something like a ball python can handle a little bit of roughness. Skinny little tree snakes like this, not so much. So this probably isn't the best first snake for like a kid to handle, especially considering that it has venom. But for a snake with venom that's actually worth thinking about, this is about as good of a snake to handle as you're gonna find. You guys already know that we recently went down to Florida to visit our good friend Chandler and his black mambas. Uh, apparently you've also learned that we got to meet his green mambas while we were there. And all of these videos are made possible because of the support of our patrons at Patreon who made that entire trip possible. So if you would like to fund content like this in the future, help us, make these sorts of videos possible, just support this channel in general, or if you just want to see all the cool features we have for our patrons, please check it out. When it comes to care, we give the Baron's Racer a score of four out of five. Baron's Racers in the wild experience a broad spectrum of environmental conditions. What does that mean? Well, it means that they can tolerate a broad spectrum of different conditions and still thrive. It means that they eat what is around without questioning it. It means that they are shockingly easy to care for. And really the only reason that I don't give them a five is because you're more likely to be bitten by caring for one than you are while handling one because they are such eager feeders. But to tell us more about these amazing snakes, their care, and uh, maybe a little bit about what it's like getting bitten by one, is Dr. Joey Muggleston of Great Basin Serpentarium who both keeps, breeds, and gets bitten by Baron's Racers. All right, so as for care, as mentioned, these guys are relatively easy to care for. They can be kept in a number of different enclosure types. We have raised these in rack systems before. I don't prefer it now, and so we actually prefer cages that are a little more vertically oriented so they can climb a bit more. Um, like I said, they can tolerate quite a few things, but they tend to spend a bunch of time up in the branches and stuff. So if you can provide that, that is a, a good idea to do. If you are worried about humidity, we offer a little humid hide box in their enclosures for them because where we are, it is a bit drier. So if there's uh, too much ventilation in the cage, then it dries out too fast. A humid hide tends to work well for them. Um, as mentioned, they accept a wide variety of food items. As adults, they don't seem to be picky at all. Occasionally, you run into a picky specimen, particularly young ones. So if you're going to buy a baby, make sure it has already taken uh, rodent prey. Uh, once in a while we'll come across a baby that's a little bit stubborn on getting going on um, on rodents. As adults, most of our adults eat frozen thawed. We have had only one that's been hit or miss on that. One of them that does sometimes prefer live prey, but for the most part they'll take frozen thawed rodents. So on these guys to help maintain higher humidity, again where we are it's quite a bit drier, we do a larger water dish, a larger one that you'd anticipate for a snake this size. On substrate, we have used a variety of things, everything from um, cypress mulch or 
the uh, cocoa blocks. Those seem to work fairly well. Yeah, either of those would be a, a sufficient substrate. You can keep them on Aspen. I don't prefer that again, just to uh, help with issues with shedding and stuff like that. We like substrate that holds a little bit more humidity. This is a rear fanged venomous snake. Um, I do not prefer to take bites from them, but they are not seen as being a significant venom and bites have occurred because a snake like this, we don't consider to be all that harmful. And so when I was putting this one into the bag this evening to bring here, he did bite me through the bag. Um, and that's kind of the end of the story. Nothing really happened there. Uh, I have had one other occasion in keeping these for, I don't know how many years now, where one did actually come out of the cage and grab onto my finger and bit a little bit harder than typical, harder than this one did putting in the bag. And it wasn't bad at all. There was a mild sting to it, but not even comparable to what you'd get from a bee or a wasp. Just a mild sting that went away after a few moments. So nothing that I was too concerned about. Again, everyone reacts differently, everyone responds differently. So I would try to avoid it where possible, but this is not one to be truly concerned about it having any sort of significant venom. Thank you, Joey. That was awesome. And it makes me a little bit less concerned about getting bitten by this guy today. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Baron's Razor a score of five out of five. This is assuming that you get one captive bred, but that is probably the way that you would get one. This is a hardy snake. We already discussed this, but it really is the case. Just be sure that any baby that you get is already feeding on its own, and you can probably expect for the snake to live well over a decade. When it comes to availability, we give the Baron's Racer a score of 3 out of 5. Baron's Racers are not super easy to find, but they're certainly out there. Your average pet shop won't have them, but don't be surprised if you find one at a pet shop either. Many expos are likely to have them as well, and it's not that difficult to find a breeder online. I would recommend Great Basin Serpentarium. And that's almost certainly where I'm going if I decide that this is the best pet snake for me. Depending on the time of year, they may not be available, but if you're willing to wait until breeding season, you should be able to get one. If it is legal where you are. And that could be the tricky part. Because this is a venomous snake, and even though that venom is not medically significant, that can still make this snake illegal in some places. So check your local laws. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Baron's Racer a score of 4 out of 5. This is not the cheapest snake, but it isn't insanely expensive either. It will need a rather large enclosure as it is a large and active snake. UVB is certainly not a bad idea. Other things such as a heat source, thermostat, substrate, water bowl, hides and branches are just normal snake expenses. Snakes are generally fairly cost effective to keep and other than the cost of the snake itself and the size of the enclosure, this is no exception. And that is why overall we give the Baron's Racer a score of 4.0 out of 5 which is a significantly better score than we gave to false water cobras, and you know how much I love false water cobras. This is just a great pet snake. Not just better than a mamba, but genuinely great and gloriously beautiful. If what you want is a big, beautiful, easy to keep snake, and it's okay with you, and all of the levels of government that have a say in your activities, that it's a little bit venomous, then the Baron's Racer might just be the best pet snake for you. And I think that includes me. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. I'm very happy with the snake. He's I bite friend. through a bag every now and then. Whenever somebody bags me, I always bite through the bag. I mean, hey, you. You okay? Oh, there you go. Come here. Yeah, you're okay. Can I get you to hang out on here for a minute?